Mm -mm -mm. Is that... Yes. Okay, that's working. Right. Um, as a heads up, if the stream goes down for whatever reason, I'm not in control of the internet. It's disconnected me twice while I've just been trying to stream the intro thing. I don't know what's going on with the internet. PlusNet assured me that there was no faults. That there's definitely some faults. Something's going wrong. So I'm keeping an eye on the little green square. If it disconnects, I should come back as long as it doesn't go completely down. And I think OBS and YouTube together work to make the stream in one. So if it goes wrong for whatever reason, at least you know what's going on. Um, right, so what is this stream about? It's, it's about making a unique... Warhammer collection, so that's armies or models. That's what we're going to be talking about. I'm going to show you some of the stuff that I've got that I've still got to hand. Um, I've done so many conversions, so many models over the years, I don't keep all of them. So I've just found a handful in a box. So I'm going to show some of those and I'm going to go through the process that I do when I'm designing or you know planning an army and then what I do, what the steps that I do that I take so that I can then make it into something really unique and customized so that it's different from everybody else's. And if you give me what you, like the ideas that you use for your armies, that'll be cool, put it in the comments. And um, hopefully there'll be a big compilation of things that people can use and make their own stuff look really cool. What else has been happening? So I'll go over briefly what I've been doing and then we'll go through who's in the chat and then we'll start and then we'll probably have a little bit of a any questions and answers towards the end of the show as well we'll we'll go for about an hour i'm i'm hungry rachel's rachel's disappeared for the weekend she's gone back to her parents then she's been to like a comedy club and she went back for longer because they tempted her with west hallam pizza which is the best pizza place where we're from um, she basically stayed for another day or two because of the promise of pizza. So she's, I know she's having pizza tonight. So that's, I've got to choose what I'm going to have, but uh, it'll probably be a tin or something, but I've got to go and eat something. I've not had anything at all. I've been playing Xbox all day. I've been playing Smite, losing most games. It's been pretty horrendous and uh, it's been good to have a break because all week I've just been doing building or I've been doing editing. I finished a tutorial video yesterday, which went up on the website. So if you're a premium member, you'll get access to that. It's one of the Ungors, so the painting tutorial for painting one of the little not so bestie gores in the Brayherd army that I've been working on. And I was aiming to do 20 of them so I could use them against Rachel on the 1st of May for the live battle report. But I don't know if I'm going to get all 20 of them done. I'm trying to get the tutorials done as a priority. I did an unboxing, which went up yesterday as well. So um, that was done. And... I have got a few more unboxings. I don't know whether to put them up or not. You know, it's you open a box, you get reactions, and that's about it. There's nothing hugely special about it, but I know that some people have requested that we show some of the boxes that we have. So I've put them up, but I don't know how many more I'll do in future, to be fair. Uh, hashtag Sam carries on Smite. Yes, I do carry on Smite. Hashtag you can do it, Sam. I don't think I can. I don't think I can do 20 of them. Uh, what's your gamer tag for Smite and do you have a mic? I would love to have a match. If you can carry me well, because I'm fed up with them <laughs> losing. If uh, What is my gamer tag? Sam Stocks UK. All, all, so Sam Space Stocks Space UK. Um, I'm horrendous on the Xbox, as in I just get angry. It's not, it's not nice being me on the Xbox. So that's what I've been doing. What else have I... Oh, and the Caradron Overlords. They're coming along, and today, I'll, I'll show you the bits, but Carl dropped off some really cool bits for the front of the Ironclad, so I'll have a look at that, because that ties into this this um, show that I'm working on today, so it kind of works with that. So I'll be doing the Ironclad probably tomorrow or Monday. I'm probably going to spend two days of the week building my stuff, and then the other three I'll be doing tutorials for the website. But they look pretty good. I've, I'm after flags now, so I've got this... Um, this is, oh, there's a Rachel hair there. This is a Scion flag. And because of the top of the Ironclad, each turn you can choose to raise one of four flags. So I want four different flags. Either four different flags with different things on it. So they could be like four of these, but painted differently. With some text on it to tell me what it is. I just think it's quite cool to have that on there. Or it could be four completely different banners. So I'm just trying to gather up all my banners and see what would look cool. Um, but it has got a giant Imperial Eagle on it, so it doesn't really fit for Caradron Overlords or the human Skyfleet, which I'm working on. 
probably won't be won't be uh, usable. We'll go through the chat. Let's see who's here. And oh, there's a load of people. Forty odd people. Okay, so Joe is the top that I've got on here. I know there's been people for quite a while. I think at least an hour now. People have been doing the pre-show thing. Maybe longer. I don't know. Um, I was dying on Smite. So Joe is here. Uh, Marty and Patrick, welcome to both of you. Well, all of you. Daryl, welcome, Daryl. We have Slippy Tiger, Tom Wilson, Al Kirkham. Who else? No Normies. I think that's a new name. Welcome, No Normies. Graham Rigg. Hey, Graham. Uh, Amit, Mr. Amit, the admin. We have Martin Dix and Felhate. Time to make a cup of tea. Ah, oh, I forgot the tea. I knew there was something. I've got some squash, but not tea. We have Funbug number one. Welcome. Scott Bile, Baz Watkins, Tanya T. Mr. Viva La Jack. Uh, Dr. Octopus. I think it's still probably one of my favourite names on YouTube. Big McDanskill, Ian Stanford, Will Pollock, C. Mawson. Who else? Frost and Fists. I've not seen... Uh, I wonder if that's Mythos. I think it probably is. I've not seen Mythos's stuff for a while, actually. I think the last video I saw... Oh, God. What was the last video that I watched of Frost and Fists? That, they definitely mentioned Wargamer Online in there, so thanks for that. But I, I can't remember what it was. It, it might have been the giveaway for your subscriber uh, milestone. But it might have been some form of painting video. It might have been your Space Wolf video, actually. I think that was it. Hive Army. Welcome, Hive Army. Sam, would that new shipwreck model be any use to you for adding some bits to your ship? It would, and I'm a bit, kind of, I was like, yeah, there's a ship, but I've just bought the Ironclad, which was 70 pounds, so it's quite expensive for the Ironclad. So I, I kind of would like the Undead ship as well, but then it's a 70 pounds Ironclad with all the bits that I'm putting on it, mixed with this wooden ship. I don't know if I can justify buying more bits just to stick onto it. Where can I send an email to WGO? I would like to recommend a video topic. You can send me an email directly. There is a form on the website. I think there's a there's a contact form on there which Phil set up, but he gets all of the questions. So I don't necessarily see them. If you want to use that form, Phil will get it. If you want to send anything to me, you can send it to my email address, which is samwise at wargameronline.com, so that's quite easy to remember, or messages on the Facebook group, anywhere really, we're quite contactable, if you message us on any of our social media, we reply, we do our best to reply, I don't think we've ever missed anything. So, okay, that, that was good, that was good, I got through all of the hellos and welcomes, thank you to everyone who's joined me tonight actually, on another Saturday, keeping me company, and letting me talk an absolute load of rubbish for an hour. And we're eight minutes in. We've got loads of time. So any questions, um, please. Oh, oh, we have got a ref. Oh, yeah. Okay, we'll talk about that another time. Uh, my Tayvara from Forge World is now built, now built, having arrived a week ago. That's interesting. Uh, DJ the Lucky One is here as well. Okay. All right. Let me figure out, because I'm not like Phil with the whole setup. I can only do so many things. So I've got two different... I think this one will work. There we go. Look at that. That works. Oh. So I can switch between these. Technology. We'll um, <laughs> switch to this. Uh, Shiner Chen. Welcome, Shiner Chen. Right. So I've broken this down. And you know what? I've got some of these models to hand as well. So we can talk about these in a little bit. I'll just chuck them here for now. <laughs> there we go right nice and messy we'll look through those later if there's anything you want to see in particular we'll have a look but we're going to go through what i actually do so making unique models in warhammer it's it's something that um i do personally converting and making things my own is the best part of the hobby for me i don't like just buying a kit and putting it together as the instructions say because um i don't like turning up with the same stuff I did it with armies as well. I don't like having the same army as a lot of people. So if, if there's a lot of space marines in the area, I won't do space marines. If there's a lot of orcs, I won't do orcs. You know, I'll, I'll pick something that isn't seen. And if it is, even when I pick something that, you know, isn't really used, like space, well, space marines are used, but you know what I mean. If I pick Brayherd, I'll try and convert them in some way so that they are different. Same with the Carriage on Overlords. 
there's more people who are collecting those I've realized over the last few weeks, but no one that I've seen has done a human sky fleet. So it's, it's something that's unique and custom for me. And I go through a process whenever I'm thinking of starting a new army that's, it takes quite a bit of time and I have to plan it out beforehand, but it means that I can stay focused with it and I know what direction I'm going to go with it. I can search for the, the bits and pieces that I need. I can, I haven't got to the paint stage of working out my color scheme yet, but that's another step of the process. So what I do first of all, uh, probably the Space Wolf with permafrost basing. Yes, it was probably that. So the, so what I do first of all is thinking of themes. Now, themes can be based on a huge number of, of things. It's not... I'll just give you an example. So I've written down one example of theming is factions, races, or creatures. So and, and another example of that is you could pick a samurai or a pirate or a an angel, a werewolf, a ghost, or a demon, or uh, you could pick any sort of um, creature, and then you could base your army around it. So for, for my Caradron Overlords, obviously they're Sky Pirates anyway, but it's a pirate theme. Next, I wanted to make it human, so I've, I've done that as well. <laughs> um, so it's human pirates, and that's the theme, but I also wanted to keep some of the Caradron Overlord aesthetic with the uh, steampunk style stuff on there so I've, I've tried to merge the two of those and that's what I went into this project thinking I wanted to come out it was quite simple it's humans so that's easy and still being able to make them look a little bit like steampunk techno pirates so that's my theme for the carriage on overlord list and what I've done with those is I'll show you that first let's move all these rubbish out of the way so what I've done with these this is the engine rigger one it's the, it, a lot of you will have already seen this, it's the Orlock model. And I've just used one of the Skitari Assassin heads. I need to green stuff, I need to get some bits from Green Stuff World, the rollers and things like that. But it's going to have cables coming down from its mask. And like the, the weapons, this was a Caradron Overlord volley gun of some sort, which I cut off at the handle and then used the Orlock hand and stuck it onto there. So I've got to green stuff that gap in there. Same with the hand, the Orlock gun. This hand, these fingers were attached to another gun. So I had to use a blade to carve that off the gun and then stick it, the fingers, onto the base of this gun. So it wasn't the easiest of conversions. But that's that's the first one that I tried. Then I had to get the backpack to work because normally these Caradron Overlords, they've got these big ball floating. Oh, what the hell was that? I haven't even got pop-ups, but something just flashed on screen. Oh, Viva La Jack. What the hell, Jack? What the deuce, Jack? Right, I'm going to have to bring this up. Sorry, I'm going to stop the stream. I'm going to stop the stream. What the hell, Jack, are you doing? Oh, my days. Right, one sec, one sec, one sec. Streamlabs. Because the, the pop-ups go too quick. Log in with YouTube. Allow. Come on, Streamlabs. I'm allowing you. A hundred quid. Viva la Jack. Sam, you beautiful man. Towards pieces and stuffs. Thanks, Jack. I mean, you should have kept that for yourself to start your own... Well, you, you've just started the hobby. So Jack is somebody who I play on the Xbox with, who watched one or two of the streams and then decided he wanted to give Warhammer a go. And now he's addicted to Warhammer. And now he's just chucked a hundred pounds donation. So that's ridiculous. But thank you very much, Jack. And you really should have kept that to buy some more bits for yourself. But I do appreciate that. Wow, that's insane. Right, where was I? This is what happens every time it goes off track. We were looking at something. There we go. <laughs> Caradron over. Now I've got to go back on here. Oh my God. Right, I'm there on the chat. I'm going to continue reading the chat. So anything that you guys say, I will go through and try and read. Marty just put awesome Viva La Jack smiley face. Right, so, what was I saying? These have got big balls on them, but they're normally attached to the shoulder pads of the Caradron Overlords. So I had to find a way to make them work with these Orlocks. So I just drilled a hole in the bottom of the base of this, and you can see there's a pin holding the two of those together. And then the rest of this fin, I just made it work as it is. So I did the first one. That was my test model. We'll talk about doing one first of all, and then working on with the next one. 
but this is one which I wanted to do, which is floating. So the first guy, he's stood, he's going to be stood on some form of rock or tree or something like that. The other two in the unit are going to be floating. So they're going to be angles like that. And I've just got to figure out how I'm going to attach them to the bases. So this guy's floating. He's got a giant drill cannon with the same pain in the backside, chopping the fingers off and the handle and all of that sort of stuff. But you can see how he's, he's he can be put floating at all sorts of angles. And he's come out really well. So going off track a little bit, but the idea was that I picked human, I picked pirate, and I tried to make them as carriage on and steampunk as I could, which I think I've done with these. I just need to green stuff them and fix them. So first things first, pick a faction, pick a race, pick a creature. If you wanted to do an all samurai army, then you you know you know what you're going to be looking for. So you're going to be looking for some form of human models that you can add samurai weapons or uh, helmets or armor or something to, or even an entire samurai set of models that you can just use and put the right weapons and things like that on it. If you're doing angels, then it, it could be, that, or even winged creatures, it could be that you pick some models like the harpies from, not harpies, uh, what they call dark Eldar models. Help me out. Somebody can help me out, please. Uh, dark Eldar scourge i think they're called they've got devil wings and they've got angel wings in the set so it might be that you would um maybe you could go halves with somebody maybe you're going to do an angel army they're going to do a devil army and you basically use the scourge box set as a basis to to convert the army so you buy a bunch of scourge boxes between you and a friend you take all of the angels they take all the angel wings they take all the devil wings and between you you use those to add to another model and then you look for the model which would be suitable for that. So it could be that you're going to put them onto uh, Sigma uh, Stormcast Eternal. It could be that you're going to put them onto any, anything, basically. You're going to be picking what would work for it. So once you've picked your theme, the next step is to figure out what type of army you're going to be doing. Now, um, the way uh, what I mean by that is, are you going to be doing a ranged army? Are you going to be doing a magic-based one? Is it going to be close quarters? Are you going to be doing a hit-and-run style army? And... Once you've figured that out, you can then go on to what rules are you going to use for it. So for me, it was easy because I'd already picked, you know, it was easy. I looked at the Caradron Overlords. I've loved the fact that they had the giant pirate ships. I wasn't interested in having dwarves. However, the Orlock models work perfectly for humans. So I knew that I just need to make the Orlock models work for the rules of the Caradron Overlords. So that was easy. But if you're going to be using, it's, it's not a proxy. If you're going to be doing the Counts as style army, you need to make sure that the rules fit. So the base size of the model, if you're going to be having this little skeleton dude and he is going to represent a Bretonian archer, let's say, he needs to be on the same base as the Bretonian archer, what it would be, so 25 mil. He needs to have the same war gear as the Bretonian archer. So does he have a bow and an arrow or bow if that's all he has and maybe a bit of a hand, a hand weapon on the back of here, which he does. You just check that all of that equipment and the base size and the size of the model is all reasonably close to the actual rules that you're going to be using. Once you've done that, you can then plan out the entire list and you can decide how many models you want to go. So the first step is figuring out your theme. The next step is working out what type of army you want to do. And then from that, you can figure out what rules will work with the, the stuff that you've chosen. The next bit... Oh, and this, yeah, quite important with that bit, I wrote down WYSIWYG, because if you're going to be playing these sort of armies at tournaments or even at clubs and places where it's not like your best mates that you're playing against, who generally wouldn't care if you put... I mean, Rachel puts coffee mugs on the table and says they're drop pods, and we all kind of give, them, give her an evil look, but we go, yeah, whatever, if you just want to try it out, that's fine. But if you go to a tournament with your coffee mugs and, you know, you're going to get the table flipped, or you're just going to get refused from playing the game, you need to make the effort you can't just get a model put it on the table and say yeah that's a what could that be today that's a more crusher you have to make sure that you've gone to the effort of putting the right equipment on it as, as close as possible and what i say by that is these caradron overlord models that are blatantly humans the normal arcanauts have got a pistol and a close combat weapon a blade of some sort so i've made sure that these have got pistols and blades now that isn't a carriage on overlord pistol but i'm using it as it i'm just saying it is a pistol because it's the equivalent but that looks more like a human weapon plus i don't need to convert the hell out of every single weapon that these carry and it gives me more flexibility like this arm was taken from an empire model which i just cut off at the shoulder stuck on and it looks quite nice it looks quite corsair and piratey it works with the rest of the model 
So just try and make sure you've got the equivalent equipment on the model, which is represented in the rules. And that way, if you go to a tournament, you can say, like, I'm going to basically have nine people in my unit, which are all going to have these pistols and some form of close combat weapon. The leader of the unit has got a bigger pistol. So you can see that the special pistol that the leader has got is different to the rest of them. Just make sure you go along those sort of lines when you're going to be making the changes. The uh, I'm going to have to probably go through the chat because there's quite a lot. The next step, we'll look at environment. So the environment that they're going to be in. So try and remind me if I forget. So where did we get to? Uh, C. Morton, if you're a Wargamer Online, if you're going with a pirate theme, why not make each of the four flags you mentioned earlier a different pirate flag? <clears throat> POTC, what is that? Is that Pirates of the Caribbean? Pirates of the Caribbean 3 featured several different pirate flags. I need to watch that again because I can't remember it. And I haven't even looked into it. And and to be fair, that brings you on to another point. When you're thinking about your theme, things like movies and TV series and books and uh, all of that sort of stuff can help you pick your theme. So, you, you know, you could... I was going to say Lord of the Rings, but you, there's a whole Lord of the Rings game if you want to play that. But... Pirates of the Caribbean, for example, I could watch all of that and then get some tips about what I want to do with the, the army that I'm working on. And it's quite good for inspiration as well as ideas when you're putting it into the actual model form. So it's worth watching films and TV series. And it's a good excuse just to sit down and, you know, be a vegetable for at least two hours watching something. Uh, Amit's doing his admin goodness, saying, get onto the forum. So the forum is free. Go to wargameonline.com, make a free account, and then you can post on the forum and you can put up your project logs. But like I said, we're going to be doing the updates probably every three weeks, I'd say, because we've got battle reports that we'll be doing on Wednesdays. We have got potentially a really fun show next Thursday that we're doing live. It's nothing to do with wargaming. Well, it is. It's themed wargaming. But for next Thursday, Rachel, me, Luke, who was on the recent Twitch battle report, Phil... And Matt Pink, we're all going to go around and we're going to have um, a game of something. But it's it's really fun. It's quite embarrassing for us. So if you want to laugh at us, then it's probably worth tuning in for that. Rachel's been desperate to, to do this version of what we're doing since we played the first version of it. I'm not going to reveal it because you'll just have to turn up on the day. It just embarrasses us. So that's as much as I'm going to go with it. Uh, Viva La Jack, I did nothing. Marty, so Marty's asking for Jack what he's playing. So Jack's not. I mean, he, I think he did 40k when he first, when he first, when he when he was younger, he did um, Space Marines and things like that. But he hasn't played it for years, as most of most of us do. We we play it when we're younger, and we kind of mess it all up and stick the heads on their arms. I mean, that's what I did, and kind of dunk them in the paint, and then make up rules and beat your brother so that he never wants to play a wargaming game again. Um, and then you have a gap or I had a gap anyway and then you come back to it when you've got a little bit more money and you can spend a little bit more time and you're a little bit more patient and then you do it properly so that's what I think a lot of us do and then we either get addicted or we realize it's not for us and then we we don't do it again or we get back into it later on in life so Jack's on that initial stage after having the break and I think he's realized how how big the the hobby is now and how expansive it is how much help there is on the internet how good the models are and the products that you can use nowadays like it's tons better than it ever was so it's nice for people who have played it when they were younger to have that break and obviously there's there's going to be nostalgia and things but when you come back to it you realize that it is actually better than it ever was and although the nostalgia is there it's awesome right now if you know if kids getting into the hobby the like today have got it a lot easier than you know back when I was doing it and I had it easier when people like Phil had started when Phil started he was like yeah there was no washers there was no nothing I mean I had inks when I started but he was like there was no washers there was there was nothing I'm like really so you literally just painted all of your shading in yep yep you had to blend everything in and and that would probably put a lot of people off including me but so now it's, it's easier and everything gets progressively easier airbrushing has now come in so that's another tool that you can use to make things quicker um more effective obviously it's another skill you've got to learn but there's all these different things that pop up mm -mm -mm. oh yeah baz 
uh, Daryl was saying, Baz just saw your custodians model from Wednesday. How, holy cow, it was amazing. That was a really good custodians model, Baz. Uh, Scott, at Wargamer Online, I'm doing Mad Max theme using Necromunder Minis and Orc Rules. Perfect. And um, that's another idea of an awesome theme. I've thought about it a few times. But I never did it with the Mad Max theme. But you can really have a lot of fun converting all of those vehicles. I've seen somebody do it with orcs. But I've not seen somebody do it with humans instead of orcs. But that's a perfect example. You use human models. You convert the, the vehicle so the, the right, the, you know, the, the proper mod, uh, vehicles or the equivalent. And then you use the orc rules, which are perfect. It just means you've got to paint a lot of and, and convert a lot of humans to go along with it. But that's a perfect example of theming an army. Uh, Ian Stanford, I, I always try different colour schemes and bases for my armies. Yeah, perfect way to figure out what works for you and what you enjoy. I know that I love Death World Forest as a colour. I tried to use Death World Forest on everything for a period, I think two years, I painted everything with that colour. Then I switched to Mephiston Red, uh, Black and Gold. So on every model I painted it was Black, Red and Gold. And I'm slowly weaning myself off that, but I kept the Black Armour, so everything I paint is Black Armour. And now I'm going to switch it out. So for the Caradon Overlords and going forwards, I'm going to pick a new favourite colour. And I'm going to try that out and see how I get on with it. The Jack's favourite colour combo is black and red. There you go. Just chuck gold in the mix. You'll be fine. Possible Blood Ravens. Black and red. What else can be black and red? Blood Angels, if you do Death Company. Uh, black and red. There's, there's tons of chapters online, actually. Or you do, like you've done, your own custom chapter. <laughs> right there's a lot of chat between everyone that's good marty saying sam skull and crossbones yeah i think it's needed oh it is really cool actually check this out so i don't know if you can see but his belt buckle has got a skull on it so each of these orlock dudes have actually got skulls all over them anyway some of them have got them on the knee pads and the elbows and stuff it's perfect it's like these were designed to be done as a human sky fleet but everyone hold off until i've done mine at least dunny woods is here welcome dunny woods uh, Tom's saying, is it strip poker that we'll be playing next Thursday? It's not. Um, obviously, uh, I wouldn't be embarrassed. Uh, it's just we're a family channel, so <laughs> we wouldn't put strip poker on the channel. But it's... <laughs> uh, you just won't wait till next week. I don't know if it's Wednesday or Thursday. I'm pretty sure it's Thursday, but we'll have to work it out. And Rachel's so excited about it. She's so excited. Anyway. Come on, why are you doing this? Why are you skipping on me? Frank Storm, welcome Frank. You're cracking on with your um, Chronicles stuff as well. It's good to see. Martin Dix, what would you recommend for Angel Wings for my Gilliman conversion? Gilliman's quite a big model. Uh, for that size, Angel Wings. It depends if you want to do like the Techno Angel Wings because you've got things like the Sisters model, Celestine, they're too small. Zinch, the, so for Feathered Wings, you've got Zinch. But they're, I think they're too big, the Lord of Change. Same with the Phoenix Wings. They're amazing, but I think they're too big. I'd have to have a look. We'll have a look in a moment and see if there's third-party stuff or if there's stuff on the GW line, because that can be our test. So we'll check that out for you, Martin. 12 Neath, welcome 12 Neath. Elster Nation as well, welcome. Uh, I did watch, if anybody um, gets a chance, to go on to um, the Chilling Wargamers YouTube channel and they just started back up again. So they had a show last week. I think it was last week. I watched it pretty much all the way through it was Elster Nation and uh, Spud so it's worth watching that to see that they're back I think I got all the chat just scrolling up because I do um, it skips so often yeah right Perfect. So let's get back to what we were talking about. And I'm going to highlight that. So the environment is what I was saying. So what environment are there in? Because this will theme the army, this will theme the bases and also the colour scheme. Because once you've figured out what bases you're going to be doing, you can also make your colour scheme either contrast or blend with it, depending on what you want them to do. So environments, you've got things like uh, lava, snow and glaciers, obviously, woodland, forests, swamps. What else have we got? Desert. You could have sea-based. Obviously, if you're going to be doing the Ideneth Deepkin, they're already in the sea, so that kind of helps. 
but pick an environment they're going to be in and see if that works. So if you're doing pirates, they're probably going to be sea-based, except for if you've got flying ships. So for my army, I'm picking swamps. And the reason I've chosen swamps is because I'm going to be teaming up with Patrick again in the next doubles tournament that we go to, and he's using the Sylvaneth. So uh, I'm not too keen on doing forests and woods because I think they're too they're too thick with trees and there'd probably be too many bright colours on there. But for the pirate and the mercenary style army that I'm going to be building, a swamp works perfectly and it also works for Patrick because he can have his dryads coming out of the, the you know the swampy water or coming out of these decayed and rotten trees with ivy wrapped around them. You can go to town with the Sylvaneth as much as I can do some nice big themed bases on the overlords. So picking the environment they're in and then thinking about how you want to do the bases and I've been I took the dog today I'm still pale even though I do take the dog every day I don't seem to and I'm out in the sun I just stay pale but I've been picking up tiny little twigs and I don't know how to treat them yet because I think they might need to go in isopropanol or they might need to be PVA sealed or something but I'm going to probably try and put some sticks and some um, tufts that I bought on there as well I bought some I spent, I spent about 30 pounds on basing materials and I really didn't get much but I've got some ivy and things like that on the way, but I'm I'm trying to use as many natural materials as possible because they're free. They're on the floor in the fields and things, so they're easy to pick up. Um, and I've done videos on bases, done quite a lot. So you could, you know, if you're doing a, a ice base, you can easily follow the permafrost tutorial. It's quite easy to follow, and it's fairly cheap to actually recreate, and it looks nice and it stands out. If you're doing, going to be doing deserts, you could mix in all of the cracked earth paints, and there's tons of products to use for all of that as well. So pick your theme and then go with it. That's the environment side of things. And then the next bit is browsing for the, the basis of the model. So once you've figured out what you're doing, what theme you're doing, what rules you're going to be doing, and what bits you're going to need. So if you know you're going to need pistols and, and swords, you can then start looking for all of the kits. Now, you can do this in various ways. Oh, they've stuck together. Oh, dear. Might have broke that. Uh, uh, various ways. So you've got third-party websites. So if you go onto Google... And type in, as I have, third-party Warhammer bits. And it comes up with this Daka Daka thread immediately. So this is basically, you open this up, and it's a list of all these different companies with third-party bits. So if you're not going to be going to a GW uh, tournament or a store, and you can use whatever bits you want, you're, it's open to a lot more choice. If you're doing GW only, like I am with the Carriage on Overlords, you're limited a little bit more because you have to use GW or made bits that you've made yourself. So we'll talk about that in a moment. But like if we open some of these up, Spellcrow are brilliant. They've sent us as a channel a bunch of stuff in the past, and they're, they're sending some more. Uh, but these have got a range of different bits, so you can click on these. If we go on to conversion bits, let's type in... Let's just go on to guards. So in here, if you know you're going to be needing uh, laser guns, if you're going to be playing Tau, they're probably not Tau-ish, but if you're going to be doing like a, a human... Let's say you're going to be doing a human Tau mercenary force, and you wanted some different guns... Uh, you could go on here and you could pick up some laser guns that look a little bit different to every other gun in 40k but would could be used as uh, what are they called pulse carbines or something like that. Oh, now it's broke. What are you doing? You can see I don't test any of this stuff before I go online. Same with heads. If you're going to be doing a, a Blitzkrieg themed army and you want all of your stuff in gas masks, you come on here and you can find that there's gas mask heads. Uh, and you basically just browse all of these third-party websites and what I do is I try and find a, a website that's got a range which is large enough for you to pick things that will go over all of the models so maybe you'll have some shoulder pads or maybe you'll have some fur that goes down their cape as well as like a loincloth and maybe a helmet and you basically go through these websites and see what you can buy uh, that will suit you the best so that's Spellcrow they're really good and they send you extra stuff as well. Spellcrow's worth buying from because you pay like 20 euros or 30 euros. They always chuck in something extra. Got Puppets War. These are very good as well. Very nice for heads. I use these on the Grey Knight models that I built. So you've got some support crew there. But we're here for bits, aren't we? So parts. And let's say we're going for oh, arms and weapons. I'm going to find some form of funky sword. I always, I'm always after samurai stuff. So I don't know if there is any on here. No, no. Don't worry, I'm not going to make this whole um, stream about just browsing third-party websites. Because <laughs> I know a lot of you aren't interested. Oh, they look cool for tower weapons. Oh, they look good for drones as well. Norse light shields. 
I've not seen all of this. It's fairly new. At least since I checked. Ah, uh, don't break on the internet. Maybe I shouldn't do that because I'm asking the internet to break. Oh, there we go. Scythe. Anything with scythe is really cool as well. And they look very close to uh, Tyranid arms. Oh, dear me. Cyber tentacles. But you get what I mean. You go through these websites. So there's Puppets War, uh, Cyber Miniatures. These are very good for the dwarf models. I absolutely love these. But in terms of bits, I don't think they have as many. They are nice, though. Oh, here we go. These are the nice Egyptian swords. So before Thousand Suns came out properly, I won't let me show you that in big, but there's nice Egyptian swords on here. So once you've got your theme, if you're going to be doing an Egyptian-themed army, you can come on here and, and buy those bits instead. And last for the pop-ups is Anvil Industries. So these have got very sci-fi based conversion pit bits. You've got Black Ops. And by the way, we're not getting sponsored for any of this. I'm just showing how what I would do the process of actually looking for bits if I was going to be doing third party stuff. These are so GW. <laughs> They've even got purity seals for God's sakes. Uh, weapons. That's what I like looking at. Where are the weapons? What type of weapon? Sniper rifles. Or even scopes. If you wanted all of your models to have scopes. That's not really scopes. There we go. Holographic scopes. Two pounds for ten scopes. Bargain. Chainsaws. Perfect stuff. Right. So that's one option. Now the other thing is GW stuff. So GW have got obviously a huge range of amazing models. I, I like spending time going through all of the models. When GW release a new kit, I think, oh, that's cool. Those bits can be used for something else. And that's generally how I look at stuff is how I can use it on other models or in future make some sort of themed list. So I will just go through here. And one idea that uh, I did in the past, I've got a few of the models for it, but not all of them. And Mike just the other day said he was tempted to start a Chaos Army with the same idea, he was doing like a, a four horse, horsemen apocalypse style army. So we were discussing some of the things that could be used. And I said I was using the, uh, let me find, no, it's not Maggotkin, is it? Is it Maggotkin? No. Where are the normal ones? Slaves to Darkness, most likely. Mostly. Oh, God, what is it called? There's a giant, there's a Nurgle dude on the back of a horse, and the horse is all dead and dying. It might have gone out of stock now, and they don't make it anymore. But I was going to use that and convert it with the scythe and create that into death. I was going to use the old Archeon model on a horse and have that as war. And for each of those leaders, each of the four horsemen, I was going to do a thousand point force that went with it. So there would be the the war. So there'd be Archeon as the leader. And then there would be a thousand points to go with him, which would be Corn because that fits the aggressive, the rage, war style things most. Lord of Decay, yes, it was that, Tom. Um... Corn would fit them the most, so I would do a thousand point army of that of those, and I'd make those fit the, what, how I'd style them as much as possible. Then for the Nurgle, I would use uh, obviously uh, Nurgle models, but then we, you you might want to use things like the Pox Walkers as the warriors instead. So you you'd use your normal models. So rules wise, they would probably just be Chaos Warriors. But then you'd use something to represent the Chaos Warriors. So zombies are kind of small and they're not very armoured. So it doesn't really work for that. But you'd find something. And even if you put zombie heads and zombie arms onto the Chaos Warriors to make them look like they were uh, dead or decaying. Maybe get some Nurgle bits and mix them into the Chaos Warriors to, to theme it in that sense. That would work. Same with... Uh, and rules wise you would want each of the four Chaos Gods. So Zinch would be one of them. I can't remember which one I did for that. No idea, but I'd worked it out. So the Four Horsemen Apocalypse Army had a thousand points for each Chaos God and the models would look really cool and go with it. Now, we were going to look for some wings, weren't we? So my favourite wings for small models, you've got the uh, Tyranid Gargoyles. They're really good to go to. Uh, Dark Angels, not Dark Angels, Dark Eldar. Where are we? They're called Drakari, aren't they? Where are you, Drakari? There you are. And they're the Scourge. Oh, you know what? You could use the new Daughters of Cain models, the snake things, convert them and make a whole, you know, a court of Slythe. <laughs> That'd be cool. Much nicer models than that as well. Makes me think they're going to release that again. 
Where are you, Scourge? There we go. Out of stock. Everyone's buying them for their wings. They're plucking them for the wings. These are just some of the nicest looking ones. Quite techno at the top, but you can always remove them and sculpt some feathers on if you wanted to. And then the other ones you've got are these devil wings as well. So for infantry models, they're great. They're the right size to work on uh, Space Marines as well and Stormcast. So they, they're quite nice on the back of them. Mike converted a Grey Knight with some of these wings and it looked quite angelic. They're really cool. Uh, right, we were looking for some bigger wings, weren't we? So let's see what there is. For the size of Gilliman. Now, I'm trying to think what there is wing-wise. Elves have generally got quite a lot. But the problem is they've separated the website into this. Oh my god. They don't make it easy, do they? I want to see all elven models. Anyway, let's just have a quick flick down here. So we've got some dragon wings. See, the reason I was saying whether you want feathered wings or techno wings is the Celestant Prime. They're really, they're really big wings. They would probably work. They would be as close as you could get to wings that are going to be the right scale for Gilliman. But obviously that's 48 quid. You're probably going to be looking on a bit site. Oh yeah, that's the other thing. So um, you've got third-party websites to buy your bits. You've got GW. And there's different ways of doing it with GW. You can buy the full kit and then use the other parts that you're not using in that kit on something else in the future. Or you can rob your friend's bits box, which is what Luke does. I've stopped Luke coming around to my house now. Because he comes round, and he literally just beelines to the wardrobe of shame and just starts taking all of the bits out and starts filling his boxes with them basically oh, oh that's a cool bit i'll take that so i've you know taken all the nice bits off all the sprues and kept them for projects in the future and luke just comes around and like scoops it up puts it in his bag see you later sam and then just does one but um i do the same with phil i go around to phil's and i grabbed a load of bits recently like scions and the banners and things like that ask friends so if you're on facebook with and you've got a local club or you've got a local group or friends or whoever that's interested in the hobby literally just send a message saying i'm after this sort of thing do you have anything like that and chances are somebody will have a bit that will work if they don't then you use the bits websites and i, I try and the, the bits websites are quite expensive they charge you quite a lot a lot of the time but i'm still waiting to find the really good one that I will spend all of my money buying bits from. So far, there's been a ton of people that have helped, like um, heads that have been sent to me by everybody. And like I said today, Carl dropped off this griffin head and the armor plate, which is going to be the, uh, what's it called? The front of my ironclad. It's going to be the, the centerpiece of the army. So I wanted it to have a nice big front to it. So that's what this griffin is going to be. So just find bits from friends, third party sites, uh, Facebook, eBay's a really good one if you want to buy uh, job lots. So bits boxes that people are just clearing out. There's so many people who get in and out of the hobby and especially out when they've had enough of it that you can basically pick up a big box of bits on eBay for like £10 and you'll be surprised how many good little bits that are in there that you'll be using on future projects. It's obviously not as precise as going onto a website and ordering exactly what you need, but you can just get a load of stuff and fill your drawers with it for then and you can go back to it later on. Where is the best place to get wings and jump packs for Sanguinary Guard? Spellcrow do jump packs if you want jump packs rather than the winged ones that they've got. But the... Oh, I, I was thinking, why would you want to buy wings and jump packs? Because they have wings that are attached to the jump packs. I get what you're saying. Where is the best place to buy the wings and the jump packs? So eBay or Bits websites. Now, there's places like Bitsbox, but they, they very rarely have anything in stock that I'm after. And you need to get like your delivery up to a certain amount, your order up to a certain amount before you even warrant spending on there. So in that situation, I would probably find, you know, the, the heresy groups might be pretty good to go to for that because they might not use the backpacks and the wings. They might be putting normal Space Marine backpacks on them, but they might want the ornate armor from the Sanguinary Guard to use for a conversion or something. So Facebook groups are probably your best bet to find wings and jump packs for those. Right, uh, cool, so that's that. The next bit is conversing. So uh, once you've built your models, there's normally some bits and pieces, there's gaps, like this is a goblin model for the Blood Bowl team I was working on. Now he needed to be a, 
what are they called? He's got a bouncy stick. I forgot the name. I forgot the name of a bouncy stick. Um, but you can see I've I've chopped that up. It's two banner poles which I've just drilled through and stuck a paper clip in to hold it together. And then there's a goblin jumping off at an angle. So that's my pogo stick. That's what it's called. Goblin pogo. Pogoer. And there's still some work that needs to be done green stuff wise. So the other thing is making sure you've got got the sanguinary guards. Oh, okay. Have like 20 heads. Um, keeping things like green stuff to hand so making sure you've always got enough of it because if you're just going to start converting things you don't want to wait a week for delivery on the supplies to do it because you want to get on with it or if you're like me you want to get on with it but green stuff, filler, milliput uh, you want to have all of that in sculpting tools you want to make sure you've got a good mix of those especially the uh, rubber ended sculpting tools you can pick up a pack on eBay or Amazon for like £5 I've only ever bought one pack and they've lasted me for at least 10 years they're absolutely brilliant. Oh, I'll buy that model for Pogo Stick. I've got a whole... So the other ones... I've got a whole team of Blood Bowl Goblins. And this is the other one. I, I wanted the... Uh, again, I don't know. Wrecking Ball Goblin. But I wanted to make my own. So this is one that's falling backwards. And I wanted him to look quite dynamic. So I used a chain, which I super glued. So that's a really hard chain. And it's like... He's swung it and then it's pulled him back and then he's just hit the floor and he's falling over. So that's one of the wrecking ball guys. And there's a whole goblin team that I did. Um, really cool models. I just haven't finished doing the green stuff in or painting them because we were going to do Blood Bowl and then we stopped. But that's what happens. Um, in terms of other materials to keep in stock, plastic hard, balsa, balsa wood. Because if you're going to be doing bases, here's another example of that. If you can see that, it might not be showing up very well. There we go, that might work. So this is just, these are stirring sticks that you get from McDonald's. When I used to work at Games Workshop, everyone used to come down from McDonald's and they'd just bring me like coffee sticks. And you can snap them up and you can put them on bases and basically score them to make them look even more like wooden floorboards and carve around the outside. So this is just a, a wooden stirring stick that's been used as a flooring really simple to do quite effective and they look nice but that that's just an easy material that you can pick up so make sure you've got plastic hard balsa wood uh, wood uh, sorry cork sand and all of that sort of stuff to build up your bases with and also even things like chain so you've got this sort of chain around if you want to do something like that you've got pins which I spent I'm not joking I spent when Mike came around the other day probably an hour to an hour and a half and I ordered 1,000 paper clips on Amazon for four pounds and I didn't think I thought you know how many paper clips do I go through quite a lot I think because of all the pinning I do and I ordered 1,000 I spent an hour and a half cutting up 100 of these paper clips oh god I did that properly so I wouldn't have that problem so this is 100 paper clips and each paper clip got cut down into four of these pins now, I don't need to do this for probably another year now because these will be used to pin the models. I, I pin them onto the cork. So there's a paper clip in the foot. There's all of the heads I paper clip because I can position them in different ways a lot easier if they're on a paper clip. And things like the giant ball, which is on the back of this guy, uh, that was obviously pinned one to strengthen it, but two because I can position it as well. So I use paper clips and make my pins from that and it's so cheap and once you get into the habit of doing it it's it's easy just make sure you've got an hour to cut up a thousand a hundred paper clips god knows what i'm going to do with the thousand that i've got but i keep them in this little tin as well this is a tin that dave got me when he went to japan this year and it had some nice little sweets in there apparently japan don't do sweets they just do weird other foods that you get to eat but he brought me back these and they're brilliant because they just they fasten perfectly it's got a nice little lock on it and it's small enough just to put inside a box if i need to go to fills and i just like it because it's pokemon and it's a nice little evv porium anyway we'll move that out of the way the next step so once you've figured out i'm sorry this is a long one as well but i get a lot of people saying about converting and how do you do converting and how do you make these armies and i thought it'd be interesting just to talk about it so there's a lot of talking tonight and i apologize for that but i want to go through as much as possible but the, um, the next step, once you've sorted that out, is, is actually starting to work on the first one. So you start chopping up and making your first model. And I always do a test model to make sure that the conversion works before I then chop up every other model. Now, with the 
these engine riggers, I didn't know what I was doing until I started working on the first one. I cut off this back bit, I built the ore lock as a base, and then I started putting all of this together and working out how the backpack was going to work and how it was going to attach onto it, and then see what heads worked, because the rest of them have all got these Skatari tin heads. And then the weapons, I needed to test what weapons I could do on there, which were easy enough. So could I slice the fingers off the guns and could I cut the handle off and then glue it together? Once I'd done this test model, these on foot obviously is quite, you know, a bit easier to do. I then went on to the next model and that's where I started chopping up. Oh, there goes the microphone. <clears throat> started chopping up the feet. So normally these are flat, but I chopped it so it looks like he's got both feet stretched out. So I just used what I'd already done on the test model. And then I just added the chopped up foot, which I need to green stuff later on. But it meant that I'd already done the difficult bit. I'd already done the working out the process and I could just replicate it after that. So that's why you always do a test model. Same for even these. You know, I, I paper clipped, uh, pinned all of the heads and I, I knew that I needed to do that because some of these heads don't fit because of the back of this jacket that they've got. So I needed to make sure that every single head had paper clips on it. Since then, I've gone and done all of the Skatari heads that I've got and they've all got these paper clips already attached. So when I start converting one of these models, I just drill a hole in the top, pop the head in, see if it fits, and, and I know what I'm doing. But it's all because I've tested it on one first of all. Keep knocking that microphone. It's so close. I keep doing it. So testing, doing your first model and then doing it. And then after that, it's doing your green stuff, being patient with it and doing it in stages. The thing with green stuffing and sculpting is it's all patience, like 100% patience, maybe maybe 1% practice maybe one percent practice one percent skill 98 percent patience is green stuffing and anybody can do it you just need to read watch some tutorials read some articles on green stuffing get the basic tools and then just practice and take your time with it but the main thing with it is build it up in stages don't stick a blob of green stuff onto your model and then start trying to sculpt detail onto it stick a blob of green stuff onto your model fill the gaps bulk it up let it dry come back to it the next day or after you know seven or eight hours put the next bit of green stuff onto it and then add a little bit more detail and then do it in stages and if you're doing 10 models at a time you can do every step on all 10 models leave it for the next day and come back and do the next step and that's the main thing with with green stuff in i find and especially converting a lot of stuff is taking the time to do it properly so do that uh oh and also i've written this note i'm, I'm actually doing good I've put notes for a show which I haven't done in a long time so if you're making multiple versions make notes of what you're actually doing so uh, a paper clip the heads taking the fingers off the the weapon write notes so that you know what you're going to be doing for the next project uh, or you know the next time you, in a year's time you might decide that you want to build another 10 converted models but you can't remember how you actually did it write it down and then you'll know for a year's time if you are um, What else did I write down? There was something else. It's gone. <laughs> Even with notes, they can't help me. Uh, so the bases, that's the other bit. Work on your bases. Once you've worked out your theme and you know what environment you're going to be on, you can do that. And that's pretty much it. You um, build your army and then after that you work on your colour scheme. And your colour scheme is based on loads of stuff. You know, there's, there's whole websites dedicated to colour theory and uh, you want bases and you want models and things like that that are going to contrast a little bit more or if you want them to blend it's down to you working out what color scheme you want to do you know these skeletons they've got quite pale skin but the blue because there's there's not much color going on on, on here there's just bone and then the blue on the base stands out and then the green from the eye stands out so that's a conscious decision to have very boring looking skeletons with normal looking leather straps you know, there's not much going on. There's leather straps. There's a bit of black cloth on there, which couldn't be any duller. And um, a bit of metal. Really basic. But then the bases and the eyes stand out for this whole warband of these. Conversion-wise, this is another one that's it's just a skeleton hand with a dagger from some other kit completely chopped off and put there. You know, there's this guy. This guy. This is from a actual Frostgrave model. The Frostgrave have got their own set, so the hands... I just painted up as bone, but this is from a human model. Uh, these are from another kit altogether, from one of the Chaos Warriors, I think, maybe. And I just stuck them to the back of the grave guard. Just chopping bits up and sticking it together, and he's like some form of Frostgrave champion. 
cool looking model though. And who else have we got? Oh, these, this one was the biggest pain for the Frostgrave warband I was doing. I had to cut, this was the, the arm again from the human stuff. You can tell it's a little bit thicker, but I didn't mind too much. And the arrow, I had to cut on both sides of the arrow and stick it onto a hand and try to make it straight and not at an angle. So there's a, there's a lot of work going gone into these skeletons, even though it doesn't look like much, because they normally just have weapons and they don't do much. I also even cut them at the the waists and the rib cage. So normally they're a little bit more upright, and I wanted him to look a little bit more feral and hunched over, like he was crawling or you know lunging towards something. So I've cut them at the the hips. There's a bit of bone that I just cut down and then arched them over a little bit more, so they looked a little bit more feral. So there's there's decisions gone into those when I was converting them as well and it's all about thinking about what you're going to be doing. Let me just show some of these. This is a basic conversion. All I did was change the spear. This was an uh, Age of Sigmar Chaos Warrior and all it's got is like a Dark Angel's head and a bolt pistol. Couldn't be more simple and it's now an Inquisitor of some form. I think it's got a nice little demonic base there. Oh yeah, if anyone's doing lava bases, always do this step at the end. It's not very neat on here, but get a little bit of a foam from a blister pack or something and stipple on, just sponge on a little bit of rhinox hide onto the lava afterwards. And it looks like dried lava specks, which are resting on the, the lava flow. It just It changes, rather than just being really bright and kind of in your face lava, it gives it another bit of depth on there, just by having that. And I always gloss my lava. Phil never does. He doesn't think he should, and that's his right. I think you always should gloss it, but... Uh, obviously lava isn't super shiny, I just like it on a model. I think it stands out quite nice, it looks like a lava flow. Then we've got this one. This one took a lot of effort because I wanted my black dragons to be a proper piece of work. So I had to properly think, I've made these bits out of plastic hard, uh, no, sorry, green stuff and plastic and carved these blades and I got them cast up by Mark and he made me a bunch of copies of these which I could stick onto my black dragons. Shoulder insignias are from s somewhere. Oh god, I forgot. Something monkey. Pop goes the weasel, pop goes the monkey, something like that. Anyway, I bought a load of those, they're expensive. And those have basically stopped me using this as a GW army, I think. I don't I don't think I'll be able to take any of this to a tournament because of these shoulder pads. Oh, and because of the spell crow shoulder pads which I've got. Which is a shame because I was really gonna do a good job on the black dragons, but because I can't take them to a GW tournament, I'm kind of thinking, do I really want to do them? I do, but I really like the idea that I can go to a GW tournament. Anyway, so there was decisions on the horns. That horn was a bit of plastic that I'd carved and then stuck to a head, which I carved the hair off. And then these green stuff scales were just added to it afterwards to match the Black Dragon finish of the model that I wanted to go for. And he was the test model for my black dragons. I changed the armor colors a little bit from uh, the blue that it is in here to more of a gray. So this was my test model. It let me work out these blades and the heads and what I wanted to do. And from that, I've got a better idea of what I want to do for the rest of the army. Cool. Oh, and then there's this big guy. This was for my Age of Sigmar conversion thing that we did for the channel last year. There's a big story and there's a whole showcase on him, but he took a lot of work to think about what bits I wanted to use. And he came out really nice, I think, anyway. I forgot his name now. He had a cool name, anyway. They're the Scourge Wings, I think. Maybe? Yeah, I think they are Scourge Wings. So they're massive, aren't they? Um. Oh yeah, and another thing, going back to the bits, once you've decided what bits you're going to be using and you've gone through the bits box, you've raided your friend's house and whatever, get a little box and put them all together. So this is my little bits box that I've got purely for the ironclad. So these are bits that I've taken out that I've thought might work somewhere. So like artifacts on the back of the ironclad or like that's a giant cauldron with fire coming out the back of it. I've got some of these banners which might work as yeah, ship sails or you know just a flag that goes on the back or even one of those four flags that I need if I could get four identical ones of these I could paint I could you know do some sort of freehand on there and, and just kind of even magnetize it put a magnet on the back of there and have that on the there you go I've looked at it already and I haven't even thought about it magnetize that I need four of those they're from the flagellant empire set that kit was amazing it is amazing I think you can still get it 
keep them all in like this is a box uh, and behind me you can see there there I've got boxes and each one of those has got materials or bits in there and I just store them all and so for a project I can collect all of these bits and you can see it's only a little thing and I can just slot that back into the box and it's away it's off the off the desk but if I find any other bits that work with the ironclad I just pull the box out pop them in and then when it comes to converting it they're all in one place so that is that I think that is that is pretty much it that is I've done an hour of talking holy moly let me just go through the chat oh my god we have got a lot of chat any questions put them in now and I'm going to go from where I got to. So Martin Dix said, legend. That was the last thing. All right, what should we have up on the screen? Um, what shall we have? Ooh. Let's just, I don't know. Can we get the forum up? No. No, we'll just leave it. Hang on, I can do this. There we go. Cool. Right, so... No Norm is saying, uh, I've been wanting to start a new uh, a new themed Stormcast army that's Duarden based. Still need to figure out how. I'm going to bring up the screen again. Because let's, let's have a look. Might take me a while actually to go through this if I'm going to do this with everybody's. Uh, Stormcast based Duarden. I mean you could do it quite easily. You just paint them gold and give them loads of Stormcast shoulder pads and weapons. It's just... The base for the dispossessed would probably work, you know. The newer models, and I say newer, they're still old, but these are really nice models, these iron breakers. They can be built into two different variants. There you go. So the sprues, this was I mean you can you can use all of these bodies, and you can see that you can just chop off the wep the, the weapons that are on the hands and put different weapons on there instead. So war gear wise it'll be fairly easy to actually sort out. The problem you're going to have, you know what, you're not really going to have a problem. They're great kits. Everything's separate. You can position them in different ways. Your biggest problem when you're doing these themed armies is finding the components that you're going to use for to convert. So you're going to need to buy the dwarves, and you're going to need to get the Stormcast stuff. You could even, because of how, you know, this is metal, it's the same as a Stormcast head. There's just a, a soul or there's a person inside it, but then they get warped off to Azir when they're done. Uh, and this works fine, look. You could you could say it's just a suit of armor. That works perfectly. It's a great idea. Obviously, you, you still have some of these bare-headed ones like you have Stormcast anyway. They're perfect. Sort your weaponry out and you just theme it. You give it some sort of story. So it could be that they still work for... Sigmar in some way, but they want to keep their um, allegiance to the Dwarden or whatever. You, you can come up with so much more than that. I imagine afterwards there'll be tons of comments explaining how you could do Dwarden Stormcast and it would work absolutely fine. But yeah, those are perfect models for it. What else have we got? Hammerers. And you get loads of bits in these as well. Because these could be built as two different things. I'm sure they could. Hammerers or long beards. So you get the bits to build them all with hammers. I mean, they could be your retributors. Or whatever they are with the big hammers. You've sorted. that. That's your retributors. Your special elite ones. And they're not as big as those. but And it'll be a lot cheaper to actually do an army when you're doing it like that. But spend the time converting them. Put the Put the right sort of weapons on them. Uh, customize them so you can still differentiate between the different ones you could have these ones as your liberators so they've got their shields and their their axes their close combat weapons but you could either you could either keep those or you could switch them out for actual stormcast weapons depending on what you want to do if you'd gone to the effort of making some really nice big bases um having these standing on different poses putting some stormcast bits here and there changing the color scheme and and putting your own spin on it, as well as coming up with a story, I would have no issue playing against that at all. In terms of the rest of the army, you could go crazy. I mean, what could you do? You could even get a Star Drake and just put a dwarf on the back of it. It'd be more difficult with the Palladors. I uh, don't know what you would do with Palladors. You could get some wings. 
stick them on the back of some of them as well. You could do loads. Have a Celestant Prime Dwarden. Just a really stumpy guy who's just sitting on the floor being all miserable <laughs> with his wings folded up behind his back because he's decided he's not going to help today. Imagine a dwarf on the back of that. Just a little stumpy guy. You could use the Fire Slayer uh, model as a base. I mean, you're sorted on Judicators, just the ones with guns, sorted. You've pretty much got the army working there. Anyway, let's go through the chat. Under the C, that's from Daryl. Hollow out the chest of the Stormcast. Make a small seat to put the dwarf on. And then build in the rest of the bits so it's like a power loader. That's amazing. <coughs> That's amazing. So they have to kill Stormcast. I like the idea of that. I did make uh, some mech dwarf dudes. And I don't know. I think Luke robbed them off me and never paid me for them. The giant... Uh, the the What are they called? I've oh, got the website up. Jesus. 40k models. Uh, Adeptus Mechanicus, I want to say. Where's the Mechanicum? Mechanicum, where are you? Oh god, why can I not read? Adeptus Mechanicus. So, these ones, the Castellan robots, and I wanted dwarves controlling them. So, this whole top, this whole bit here, was just cut out. And then there was a dwarf sitting in the back of there, and it was the guys who rode in the gyrocopters. So it was a gyrocopter pilot sitting inside one of those, and then the weapons were changed. So there was a there was um what did I give him? I think the weapons were used. It was used as a cannon or a organ gun or whatever I wanted to use, and each of the weapons were magnetized. So I could use a dwarf in the back in one of those big things and use it as a cannon in the gameplay. So rules wise, it was sorted. It was a really cool looking. Uh, I only did two or three of the robots, but they look cool. I didn't go any further because it was taking me too much time, but again, that's another thing you could theme. Fumbug, are they eco-warrior pirates? That's my uh, Caradons working with the Sylvaneth. I don't know. We haven't decided yet. Me and Patrick need to have a conversation and decide why the hell am I working for Sylvaneth? Is it that they hold a large sum of money? Do they have some um, ether gold, which I need to power the ships? Because my guys are going to be like exiled from Skyfleet space. Or do I just owe them a favour? We're going to have to work it out. Ian Stanford, I got the school pack from GW for my bases for Beast Claw Raiders. Yeah, they're perfect. I've got a pack of those to use for the Herdstone, for the Bray Herd. Because although Patrick made me one, I want to make my own as well. And I'm going to use some of the rest of those for the swamps because underneath the water, in the murky water, there'll be little skulls and things that'll be nice. So apparently you need to bake organic material to properly kill it dry. So oh, that means I'm going to have to put it in the oven. And Rachel's going to kill me. I'm going to have to look into that then because maybe I just chuck all of the twigs and stuff on, on like an oven tray and just set them on fire. <laughs> um... Coleman, hey, was stuck on the phone. Might need to go off again soon. Nah, that's a shame. Hey, Coleman, I didn't see you before. I'm, I apologise. I hope you're doing well. And I hope your lad has done some work on his models. I've been talking for over an hour. My throat's going. I could never stream for longer than an hour, could I? Uh, loads of chat between everybody there. Any ideas of an alternative model for Razor Dons? I hope everyone's okay staying on for a little bit longer than an hour, actually. I apologise if not. Where are Sheraphon? How can, why can I not read? They are order, aren't they? Oh, they're at the top. <laughs> they're just not there. Hmm. It depends on the theming. Like, if you just want to use something as Razordons in the Seraphon army, you're basically looking as accounts as it's not necessarily like a themed thing because you still want the skink handlers if you wanted to do a seraphon army and use some other models to represent it then that would be the thing where you'd want to find specific model changes because that's quite a cool model if you're just doing seraphon in terms of stuff with spikes on from what i remember there's a chaos model um, or hounds, something houndy. So like Phil and Jack, rather than using the saber tooth models for the ogres, they're using wolves. A, because they probably look better, I think. 
Um, but B, they get more of them in a pack and they're a lot cheaper. I think it's £15 for five of them and they fit the theme of the army better. So they're more wintry, which is what Jack's done with his army. And um, they, yeah, they just work a lot better for that. But there are griff hounds. I don't think they're big enough, though, to represent that. And they also don't have spikes and things, which is what the Razordons shoot. So they like send off these sort of quills. Uh, the only other one that I would say is one of the Chaos models, but you'd probably want to theme it completely, and I don't think it would work for Chaos. Why am I just going up and down? Why is the website laid out like this? Close. So where's, <laughs> where's Grand Alliance Chaos gone? Does it just delete? You're telling me I can only look at one thing at a time. Karanak, I think his name is. There we go. So that might work, you know, as, a, as an alternative if you want to do a chaos themed Seraphon army. Which, let's let's be fair, Seraphon are basically uh, willed into existence by the Slan. So you could have, oh, here we go. There's a themed army. You do a chaos tainted Slan, who basically is reimagining his Seraphon army in the eyes of chaos so it's a chaos seraphon force they're already demons in the rules you just they're not celestial demons they're normal demons instead but you could use things like the karanax instead as the razor dons that's just here we go there's one thing then you'd work out the rest of the range ah oh, i'm good at this i like this and it's all the slan's imagination so it's law wise you sorted the the slang can just be like yo i'm chaos now uh poof there we go there's all these evil monsters and then people will say, that's not a Vastilodon. Sorry, I'm the Slan. I create this out of my imagination. Might have been from memories, but we'll just ignore that bit. Dunny Woods. Maybe some of the Ideneth riders. Oh, yeah, you've got the whole new Ideneth range. Holy moly. See, I've not done a proper look since I did the... the tu uh, Not tutorial. What did I do? A lore video. My first lore video. I need to do another one soon. These models are just amazing. Absolutely amazing. Oh, it's 25 quid. Maybe I will pick up the ship. Hmm. Hmm. Maybe I could do. I need um, what I actually need to get for my 2,000 points. I'm going to go off this a second. So I've worked out my 2,000 points from what I've already done for the 1,000. And they're quite expensive because points-wise anyway. They're, well, they're quite expensive money-wise as well. But I need, for variation in the list... I'm going to need at least two frigates and three gun haulers. So that's 160 quid there. And then I need another box of Arcanaut Company. So I'll, I'll obviously do the Orlocks. So I need to get another 10 Orlocks. Another, I need to get two frigates. I haven't got any of those yet. And then three gun haulers, which I haven't got. And then I might convert another character. So I've got an Ether Chemist and maybe an Admiral. But I'll make them out of humans again. So at best... For, to make my 2,000 point army all converted and, and sorted, it's literally another two boxes of Orlocks, two of them and, and three of them, which I think is quite good. And thematic wise, I'm going to have, if I do that, I'll have an ironclad and I'll have five of these ships in between them at my disposal to choose what I want. So it still fits my idea of a human sky fleet on the run, basically, just flying around with what ships they've got, either they've stolen them or they obtained them when they were good for whatever they did and then they've been disgraced and they've left the Sky Fleet territories. But I think that's cool because everything's in ships, nothing's on the ground and um, I have got these engine riggers obviously flying around but they're going to be strapped to the side of the ironclad as well. So yeah, I'm really pleased with the Caradron Overlord list. I know they're going to nerf the hell out of shooting armies by the time these are done. So I've been doing combat armies since the beginning of Age of Sigmar, and only now I've decided to even put a ranged unit into my army, and I can guarantee they're going to... On the day I finish, there'll be an FAQ or a General's Handbook release, and it'll be, ranged units are rubbish now, <laughs> and I'll just play the Iron Jaws. Anyway, let's keep going. Uh, Derpimus Maximus, I'd be too tempted to get a Discworld death model for that, to be honest. Yeah, exactly. If you're doing non-GW models, the world is your oyster. There's so many model companies that have popped up now that do amazing kits. Um, one, I mean, if I wasn't using GW stuff for these Caradons, I would be looking at the Wild West Exodus models because they've got the steampunk vibe. They're already human. They would be perfect replacements for a pirate crew. 
and they're a lot cheaper and they're really nice variation in the kits as well. I've only got Orlocks available for my humans, so it limits me somewhat. But yeah, if you're not doing GW, you've got loads of choice, absolutely loads. Frost and Fist, I think I may steal the idea of Scourge Wings for my Wolf Priest with jump packs to separate them from my regular jump pack units. Great idea, Sam. Yeah, I mean, they're perfect, Mythos. The, the Scourge Wings, if you can make a deal with somebody and buy the ones that you want. So um, I always want the Angel Wings because they're hard to come by. So if you can find somebody who wants Devil Wings and you can sell them to them, then it's worth buying the box and separate them. Coleman will have to catch up with this a bit later, no worries. I've left you a PM on the forum about Caradron Spares since we're at it. Ooh, okay, I might have to check that then because I still haven't finished converting all of these yet. I've got about another 20 models to go, so if I can get some more Caradron bits, I could go, because I'm limited on all locks and the bits that I got out of one box of engine riggers, so I, there's not much Caradron bits going on these, but if I can get some, then I could maybe change some of the pistols around. That'd be, that'd be awesome. Maybe I can keep the Escher crew in there as well then. Um, Dunny Woods, I was looking at corn flesh hounds. Don't know how big they are. A bit too chaosy. Yeah, so you've picked one I chose <laughs> effectively because Karanok's just a big flesh hound. Daryl, I love how you've made a note to tell us to make notes. Yes. Pop goes the monkey. There we go. Uh, why did it skip on me? Marty, keep them as an in house army. I foresee WGO friendly tournaments in the future. Yeah. Yeah, hopefully. We'll just turn up with my black dragons with my little spell crow converted bits on them. Or when I'm challenged. <laughs> Challenge the black dragons. Well, I've got the huge Astraeus, which Patrick bought me at Warhammer World, which is sitting up there. And I purposely put it up there to, to encourage me to keep getting on with stuff. I, the White Scar project, I don't know if I can get them to how I want them to do. I've got to do a lot of work on them to do what I want to do. Otherwise, it's really expensive. So I'm probably going to end up doing the Astraeus in a Black Dragon scheme. But I don't like the vehicles painted black. I've painted a Repulsor, and it looks boring. So I don't know whether to just do a different chapter with the rest of the Primaris that I've got and just do a, a small force of Black Dragons with the stuff that I've, I've done already. Or even, yeah, I've painted a Repulsor, five Hellblasters, and a character. So I'm at the point where I could cut my losses and not finish them, but I really like them. <laughs> I think they look good, but they will take me forever to paint. That's the downside. Uh, Demon Lizard from Outer Space. Welcome, Demon Lizard. Or Demon underscore Lizard underscore from underscore Outer underscore Space. Welcome. I love the name as well, yes. Themed armies are awesome. I'm thinking currently about starting a Stormcast Vanguard army. Do it. I've got a box up there, which is literally just the Vanguard, and I put it aside for the Carajons, but otherwise I was going to be doing Stormcast. They're awesome. They're amazing kits. And uh, they'll be an absolute joy to paint. There's so much detail on them. They look great. Not getting your bits and all party instantly is cool. Then you don't throw out money instantly. Sam, when is the next AOS doors you guys are going to? There's one in June or July. We're not going to that because it's too soon. And I've not even built a 10 man unit yet so it's not even announced on games work by games workshop i imagine there'll be one in november time sort of around the end of the year if there isn't then it will be the one next year which was the same time with april that we went to i'm happy for it to be april to be fair next year because it gives me plenty of time to work on the army play test it when the general's handbook comes out and nerfs the hell out of my army i can at least see if there's anything i can do about it but i'm i'm, I'm happy with the end of the year or April. I imagine Patrick will come down and see us anyway at the end of this year. And we're supposed to be going and seeing him at Essen. He donated the ridiculous £444 the other day. And he's already said he's, he's that, that was part one. So he's donating more money so that we can get the equipment for the studio and, and all the other bits that we buy. Um, which is awesome. So we'll be going and seeing Patrick at Essen. And um, Phil was going to go by coach, and I was like, I'm not, I'm not doing eight hours, so we're flying. Because if we order it early enough, I think we pay £30 for flights, and we stay over for one or two nights over in Germany. And I've not been to Germany since I was a kid, so it would be nice to go. It would be nice to see Patrick again, because he's a really nice guy. He's really, he's really funny when he starts winning, because he gets really cocky. 
and you just end up like just not not arguing arguing or bickering but it's like if you watch mine and mike's games all we do is bicker all the way through if you go onto the website um it's not uh this this bray herd and skaven battle report on here if you've got a premium membership it was me and mike and we bickered all the way through it there's a lot of salt from me because mike has just got this ability to roll what he needs constantly and it's infuriating and he does it while like, like the most cool composure as well he just looks at you and he'll just and you don't even see any of this on camera he'll just look at me dead in the eyes roll the dice and it'll roll a six and he doesn't even look down he waits for me to look and then he sees the result of my face and he knows that he's rolled a six it's ridiculous um but you don't see all of that on the the camera because it's that's an unedited one it's like one hour 50 it's literally just chucked up so you do see me doing my ambush and all that sort of stuff if you can put up with that it's great um but it is a premium only at the moment anything with the website that has a p you have to pay the uh, 2.99 a month to get access to those but we are releasing those uh, they'll be on the website for at least a month and then they may come to youtube after a month it may be two months three or four we we just release stuff as and when we um, want to on youtube but if you're a premium member all of our tutorials and recorded back reports are going to go up on premium now and the live stuff will be either on twitch or on youtube mine and rachel's game seraphon versus bray herd will do on youtube because um you know our audience is on youtube at the minute and me and rachel we she, she i like the uh the abuse uh from people when they're actually watching the stream whereas twitch we tried the first one the other day that was tau versus gray knights worth watching that that was luke and, and pink both of them playing their armies for the first time. And they did a good job, actually. Uh, but check those out. Where was I up to, anyway? Let's keep going with the chat. Oh, I was talking about Patrick. Patrick's like a mic. He's like a, he's like a, he's like a German mic. He's very cool and composed, but then he does have the cockiness to him as well, which doesn't infuriate me as much as Mike does, but it's probably only going to be a few more games before Patrick does it. Um, but he's on my team for doubles, so I can never get angry with him because he kills everybody else just as much, so it's fine. Right, Chaos Razor Gore might work. Yes, that's another one that would work perfectly, Tom. Great. What's more Ice AG than Sabertooth Cats? Yeah, Wolves. I think it's because he plays Space Wolves, so they're like, there are no wolves on Fenris sort of thing. Uh, Mammoths, yes, that is more Ice AG than Sabertooth Cats. Spot on there, Martin. Demon Lizard from Outer Space. Chaos Tainted Slam, that hurts my head. Yeah, like the, the complete opposite of Chaos. They literally want to eradicate. But imagine if Chaos got a grip on a slam. Imagine if there was a Chaos Slam. It's your imagination. You do what you want. Some people will absolutely hate it. It's like the whole female uh, Space Marine argument. I absolutely hate it. Others don't care. Like It's just down to the individual. It's a hobby with toy soldiers at the end of the day with spaceships that really should not fly and aliens and demons from everywhere demon lizard from outer space things like that so although it doesn't necessarily fit the law as it is if you the rule of cool supersedes anything to be fair uh amit sam use the ideneth ship terrain piece for your ship model i've already got the iron clad i mean i could could do a lot of converting you need the giant sails and stuff. I was thinking of using it as like an outer frame for the ironclad, so it wouldn't be all the rest of the ships. But the pride and joy of my fleet would have the terrain piece as, as like a a frame, an outer frame on it instead. Been working on more Citadel Woods and Spite Revenants. Almost done. That's awesome, Al. I'm looking forward to seeing all of those, actually. Al, you should stick them up on the forum if you haven't already. I haven't seen them. I don't think I have, anyway. Do, 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 do. Ian Stanford playing a game of Wild West Exodus on Tuesday at the Gaming Club. That's awesome. I haven't played the game. I just know that the models are really nice. So I'd love to get some of the character models to paint up. They've sent me a bunch of bits, which I'm, I'm going to do uh, some tutorials with. But I haven't got as many of the characters, which are what I generally use for tutorials. Oh, what the hell? Mythos. Much love, my brother. Keep up the amazing work. It's another donation. That's two donations tonight. That's awesome. Thank you, Mephos. And you keep up the awesome work as well. And yeah, that's that's brilliant. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Um, Redcuff's reporting in. Howling Mad Cat behaving himself. That's jolly good. And I hope you're cracking on with your, your little um, or your, your awesome hobby room. 
it's looking really good it seems like it's a lot more work than you first expected but it's definitely going to be worth the effort when you can sit back everything is in its place and you can just get on with your hobby it's going to be glorious Daryl, how about painting scales or something on your black dragon tanks to break up the monotony or hang them with reptile paint pelts? They have got a couple of dragon pelty things on them. And they've got like a, a face on the front of one of them. But the, the standard black armor, because of the scheme of the army, it's, it's very clean black. It's like this. So I've tried to be as neat as I can with the edge highlights. And when you do that on a vehicle, it's quite a large flat area that doesn't really look that great so i've even st i've sponged on some weathering some metal areas and things on it but it still doesn't look as nice as a normal vehicle would if it was a bit more battered and i think it's just because of the the, the color scheme that i've chosen however it matches the infantry so if the infantry are all on the table with the tank it will match it's just as an individual tank it doesn't look that gr that impressive Frost and Fists, I'm so looking forward to seeing more from your Black Dragons. Well, the next one that I'm going to be doing building-wise is Al. I promised it was going to be Al the Ancient, who's going to be my uh, my ancient Primaris banner holder. So that's the next model I'm going to build for the army. And then painting-wise, after I'll probably paint Al next. Paint Al. I'll paint Al the Ancient next. And then I'll go on to the infantry. Marty enjoyed the battle report. Hashtag cool, Mike. Yes. Martin says the salt was strong. Yeah, that's true. That is very true. Amit, when Magic Mike, when hashtag Magic Mike looks into your eyes while he rolls dice, so hot. John, welcome, John. I've not seen you in a while. I hope you're doing well. We need to play a game soon. I've now got an Age of Sigmar Bray Herd army, which you can thrash me at. And uh, once I've got these Carajons, that'll be two armies that I can use. Obviously, I've got the Iron Jaw, so that's three armies that I can choose from. And then I need to do some form of 40k because Phil has been telling me that we are a 40k in Age of Sigmar channel. And I've been focusing heavily on Age of Sigmar for a long time and I've just neglected 40k, which I have. Tom's loving the Chaos Slant idea. That's good. Uh, Demon Lizard from Outer Space. Toy soldiers are serious business. Marty, I think the frame idea is class. Yeah, that's, that's what I'm thinking. I haven't obviously got the kit or anything for 25 pounds it's probably worth a gamble in it just to pick it up and see if it works before i convert the rest of the ironclad with a giant griffin on the front of it as well it would look different it would look like a human centerpiece to my uh, sky fleet dunny couldn't patrick use the shipwrecks as his wildwoods for more army synergy perfect idea dunny i'm sure patrick if he isn't already watching will watch this back so that's a good thing for patrick to think about great idea dunny Brett Holt, are you located in the UK? Yes, we are located in Warwickshire, specifically Leamington Spa. So we're very central in the UK. We're not too far away from anywhere other than Scotland, as Derpimus always reminds us. <laughs> Dark Elf Corsair cloaks. Yep, perfect for Salamander Marines. Then they would work for Black Dragons. The reason I didn't use them was because Spellcrow sent me a whole bunch of model uh, bits and pieces to convert the Black Dragon army. So I think it would just be one that I don't take to tournaments, which means I need to get another 40k army bought, built and painted. And at this moment in time, it will probably be Dark Eldar. If I had to pick a 40k army right here, right now. Mm, let's do this. Let's do this. Live. Not Space Marines. Blah, 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 blah. It could be Space Marines. No, not Space Marines. Unless I do more Primaris. Maybe Space Marines. Not Grey Knights. See, Astra Militarum have got awesome tanks, and you can do some really good conversions on the infantry. And Death Corps of Krieg are my favourite models, but they are like, sell your kidneys. I'll probably have to sell Rachel's kidneys, both of them. Maybe an arm as well, just to get the Death Corps of Krieg, so it's not going to be worth that. But the tanks are nice. Uh, Custodes, Rachel's got them. Sisters of Silence, mm, not enough models or synergy or anything yet. Mechanicus, no, because there's not enough to choose from. Inquisition isn't really a full force at the minute, and Phil is obsessed with Inquisition, so that's definitely not one that I would do. Same with the Ass Assassinorium. I, I took in three or four or six Vindicares where I feel like it, whenever five is not enough. Chaos Space Marines, I could potentially do, because I am evil at heart, maybe, but it's just Space Marines again. Death Guard, 100% would do an army of those if Jack hadn't um, basically claimed Nurgle forever. Maybe Thousand Sons, because no one's done them yet. 
So I could do Thousand Suns and I love the look of those. Okay, in the minute, Thousand Suns is a contender to the 40k army, which I would do. And Patrick would like me more because it's Zinch. Uh, Craftworlds, no, that's Phil. Drakari, that's the second runner-up. Harlequin's too much to do. Although it would be nice to paint really detailed little things on everything. Inari, no. Orcs, no. Necrons, no. Tau, I only like the battle suits. and they take too long to paint. Tyranids, Tyranids I could do a giant monster army so if i could make that work maybe tyranids so i've narrowed it down to tyranids drakari and thousand suns that was easy what was that two minutes all right back to it and <laughs> owls put finally yeah for owl the ancient you've seen what i've been working on owl how many videos have we released since i said i was going to be working on the black dragons and i've not even had a chance to build you yet Al. it's disgraceful i know uh, see Mawson posted an image to the Facebook group of pirate flags in between painting my first WGOC Chronicles squad. I can't get Facebook up on here at the minute because I don't think my chat... Let me just see. Let's have a look. Let us have a look. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Alright, War Game Online Community Sam found an image with the flags of the nine pirate lords in the Pirates of the Caribbean that I mentioned on the live stream. Oh, okay, so I could just paint all of those up. That's cool. They all have different rules as well, so I'd probably write the rule on the back of the flag just so I remember what it does, or at least the name of the rule. A lot of those are actual historical designs. Barbosa's flag, as an example, was used by Calico Jack Rackham. I wasn't aware of that. I just remember seeing there. Yeah, see, they learn something every day. What could be more piratey than swiping someone's flag? That's so true. <coughs> right, where is? How do I get onto the group? Why is it not showing the group? Why could I not see your stuff? Unless it was on the forum that you posted it, Mister Morrison. They're really nice. Steve's done a cracking job on them. The medic for his scions. They're cool as well. They look awesome. Don't know where they're from. Looks like heresy armoured stuff with some Skitari and something from another company. But they look good. Don't know where they are. There's Bill. There's my mate Bill. Went to school with him. And both of us went to Derby store where obviously Duncan and Chris Beach went. Okay, I can't find them, Mr. Morrison. Oh, there's some of Tom's stuff as well. Some school crushes. And there's Frank's stuff. And there's more Steve's stuff. They're cool. Nice colour scheme as well. Right. So, uh, let's keep going. <laughs> Amit. <laughs> Amit's just messaged me on Facebook. Right. Uh, Red Cuffs, thanks Sam and anyone else for the encouragement regarding my den of nerdness. How about wolf centaurs, primaris torsos with Fenrisian wolf bodies? That's cool. I think the wolf bodies would might be too small. You might need to use thunder wolves. Maybe. Ian's got to go. I've got to go. I'm starving. I've got to go and put some baked beans on. And some toast. Sweet. Whereabouts? I'm located on the south coast, just outside of Brighton. Probably as far away as possible from us at the moment, then, if you're on Brighton. But it's still not that far. It's like three hours in the car. Train journey, probably an hour and a half, too. For 25 quid, I'd chop up the ship and use it in the swamp bases. Lots of moss and stuff. Make it really weathered. Awesome idea, Tom. Might buy two. <laughs> Fell hey, I'll buy Rachel's arm. <laughs> Uh, Sam, have you seen the Elysian drop troops are being withdrawn from sale? Mm, maybe they're redoing them. Maybe they're just not selling, so they got rid of them. I haven't seen, seen that, but that's a shame. I was chucking it down. It was red hot today, and now it's probably thunderstorm, and the internet's going to go. Mm, I don't know what I'd do without the internet. Do, 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 do. Slanesh might tempt you when they come out, Sam. Yes, true. That's another army I was I was actually tempted by for Age of Sigmar, but three armies for 40k. There we go. That's, that's a good narrowing down for me. 
do a public vote. I don't like doing public votes, Martin, purely because you have to you have to enjoy the army that you're doing. You have to pick it, basically. If you don't enjoy doing it and you're doing it based on what people have voted, you generally won't stick with it. I don't, anyway. I've done public votes with friends in the past and um, never stuck with the armies. But then I'm a butterfly, so I changed to a different army regardless. It's really raining out there. Demon Lizard from Outer Space saying, Thousand Suns are awesome with the Zangor stuff. I have a Zinch Arcanite army for AOS 2. That's cool. Dracaria are absolute filth right now. Maybe I won't do those then. Ralph, I thought I'd... Yes, still on. An hour and a half, Ralph. But hello, Ralph. Okay, there we go. I'm at the end. I am at the end. So... It's been an hour and a half of me talking and you lot giving some great chat advice, um, asking some awesome questions. Um, Mythos and Jack with the donations, you know, absolutely awesome. Thank you very much to both of you. But thanks to everybody who's turned up another Saturday, another Saturday in a row. This is the 14th one, I believe. 14th Saturday with Sam. Which started off as just a thing I was going to chuck up every now and then. And now I'm doing it every week. Just because people turn up and watch every single week. So I, I do appreciate it when people come. And uh, it's nice to do these shows. So tomorrow, what's happening tomorrow? Tomorrow is Sunday. I don't know if Phil's releasing anything. It sounds like my roof's coming off. Maybe... It did say it was going to be a storm, but it sounds like there's a hurricane. Maybe I'll stay on stream. Anyway, um, Monday, Monday Musing. Next Thursday, oh, that's the thing. Next Thursday, the, the really cool, funny thing that we're going to be doing at Phil's will be worth tuning in for. But other than that, I hope you all have a fantastic weekend. I hope it's still sunny wherever you are. And if it's not, stay inside and get loads and loads of hobby done. Use the forum to do your updates for your chronicles and obviously Facebook as well. And... Um, yeah, other than that, have a fantastic week and I'll probably see you on Thursday next at Phil's house. So I'll find the credits, which still need to be updated because it says 2017 on there, but it's 2018. And all of you have a fantastic night. Bye.